Now, more than 24 hours later, we're still following uh, this encampment here at uh, the campus of UCLA this morning. It has started to get cleared out as law enforcement has made their way in. I now want to bring in Dr. Nir Hoftman. He is a medical school professor at UCLA. He joins me now live, uh, I believe, over the, over the phone. Dr. Hoffman, uh, good morning to you. Can you hear me? Do we have a good connection? Good morning, yes. Where are you joining me from and just your top line thoughts to what has gone down on school grounds this morning? So I'm uh, joining you from home. I live very close to UCLA. I work there. And, you know, my thoughts are that the actual narrative is uh, not exactly accurate, what's being reported on the news. Um, I just want to clarify a few things. First of all, this encampment began Thursday. It actually began right after the USC encampment was uh, broken apart. Uh, we saw four giant buses arrive shortly thereafter, and a whole bunch of people that we don't know who they are set, started setting up this encampment together with students. On Friday, I went down to the encampment and recorded some, uh, I actually came down there with a professional filmmaker and we did a short documentary on it. It was clear that this was going to be a very terrible situation because the people that were running the encampment were very anti-Semitic, they were uh, anarchists, they were anti-American, they were basically hoodlums. And I went to the police that day and specifically requested that they do something about it. And the police, the senior police officer there basically told me that they have a directive from the university leadership not to go up there and so that they can't do anything. On Sunday, there was a counter protest that was set up by some uh, Jewish groups and that was a permitted protest. And these thugs basically tried to disrupt this protest. I was there. They came onto the quad and basically started scuffling and fighting. And it wasn't until so many pro-Jewish protesters arrived that they finally left. Uh, I then went again on Monday to the police and complained about what was going on there. And in fact, I actually myself got assaulted while giving an interview. Really? Uh, and, what, and what happened? What, what did that assault look like? Well, so I was basically on a Zoom interview walking towards the encampment area and um, some basically like, you know, protest organizers decided that I can't cross a certain area. So they basically tried to make a wall and tell me to stop going there. So I tried to walk around them and one of them just tackled me and stole my head, my earpiece that flew out of my ear. And when I went to record this to the police, you know, they basically told me, that there's no way they're going to be able to do anything because the day prior there was a security guard that got assaulted and kidnapped into that uh, encampment and they barely got him out and so police basically had a directive they weren't allowed to go in there the police have made a statement yesterday that they're not responsible because university leadership basically uh, were controlling the situation do you feel about the response um, you know, on all sides here, the response from your school, the response from law enforcement this morning? Um, are, are you satisfied, dissatisfied with lines of communication and, and response and what you've seen? How would you describe it? So law enforcement, 100% supporting the, their response. This is not a police state. The police take their directives from the political leadership. They did everything that they could do based on what they were allowed to do. Mm -hmm. With regard to the uh, university leadership, a total fail. They were warned numerous times that this was going to be a disaster. They ignored all warnings and allowed chaos, anarchy, and total breakdown in the rule of law. And you know, when, when you have anarchy, only the anarchists win. And th this is what happened. Mm -hmm. And I know this morning, early this morning, UCLA uh, issuing the notification online that classes for the rest of this week have now shifted to remote learning. I mean, what a, what a disappointment for students there and faculty for the end of the year. Um, you know, that's not what you go to school for. It's not what you pay big tuition for. What, what does justice look like for the students and the staff who didn't participate in any of this? Professor? Well, like I told you, when you allow anarchy to reign, everybody loses. And that's what's happening. All the law-abiding citizens, the people that came to the university to learn, 
to teach, to have civil discourse. We're all the big losers here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.